Hey everybody, my name is Tracy Kronzak. And I'm Tim Lockie. You may remember us from such past endeavors as Cloud TNT, a podcast for nonprofits using Salesforce. Cloudy I totally with a chance that. of dynamite. <laughs> that, so much. that was so fun. I love doing that. Oh God, that was great. Uh, and, and we're off to how a Cloud TNT episode would start, by the way. That's true. Already interrupting. <laughs> so we're now working together, and now it matters. I am the innovation director here, and Tim is? Uh, still the CEO slash janitor. And we thought it'd be interesting to tell you how we got here and what we're thinking about next. So Tim, why don't you give us a little history of Now It Matters? Yeah, um, I mean, it's been when i can't even remember when we recorded our last episode but it was a while ago it was right when you had started working for salesforce so that's right it lots was of late ground to cover personally <laughs> right yeah and all of that and now we're in a global pandemic and i'm never traveling which is you know which which is really interesting to just be home uh especially for my wife Having getting weight as we both are Totally. I am getting <laughs> Oh yeah. Yeah. True. And we've done uh, some cool stuff, right? So yeah. I did this little endeavor with folks, outbound funds. Outbound funds. And you've done this little endeavor with folks. Yeah, I was Big Sky uh, Dreaming. I've been to a bunch of dreamings, but only helped found one, which is Big Sky Dreaming. So that's been great. But um India Dreaming and the Port Portland thing, uh, you know, uh Portlandia. So yeah, it's been it's been a crazy roller coaster um and i think where i think what i do want to do is say the last year things changed before the pandemic and, and all of that but um so i i think it'd be worth talking about that you know so what um, do you do it now it matters because as the pandemic was winding up and I was looking around this world at what's next, uh, Tim, you kept talking to me on ski chairlifts about this stuff that you were doing at Now It Matters. And I was like, oh, that sounds really interesting. I don't know. Maybe it's going to work. Maybe it's not. Wow, that sounds hard. What does it all mean? Yeah, uh, man, that, that was on chairlifts, wasn't it? Was on a times. lot of chairlifts before, before we birthday. could ski. Yeah, exactly. before we gained all this weight. <laughs> exactly. uh, yeah. So here's here's the story. Um, we hit our nine years last summer, uh, and I looked back and got a little bit uh, for both business reasons, but also just because the nine year mark. I felt like by ten years, I want to be in a different place, and so I looked back and realized that I was. I mean, we had tons of great projects, amazing clients, really dedicated staff. So it's not like, not like we hadn't accomplished a lot, but I also didn't feel confident. Um, and especially because I couldn't point to any data that showed me how to be confident in the, uh, the net effect that we had had on our clients. And, um, you know, like all, like every business, there were some crashes and burns where it was like, wow, that didn't really, that did not go well. Not very many for our business, frankly, and for like implementations have uh, such a high failure rate and ours is a low failure rate. So in that, in that sense, it's fine. But um, that feels like a low bar. And so I just looked back and, and started wondering what, what does this look like in the best clients that operate? in this. So we kind of looked at some of the clients that we felt like had gone further and done more with our services. And, um, and what we saw when we started digging into that was that what our, what our clients really wanted was not what we were delivering first. It was an outcome and it wasn't an outcome that I felt like we could guarantee. And that bothered me enough that we just restructured everything, took Now It Matters down to its studs, reframed how we aligned jobs, how we decided things. We talked to a, um, we talked to a, stra a strategic uh, consultant about services. Um, we, we, we really just dug down and said, if we could 
if we could make whatever changes we wanted to, what would we do differently? Um, and from that, we came up with this idea of guidance. We came up with three functions that technology needs to accomplish in order for it to really work well. Those three functions are, you need to center data, you need to convert that data to information, and that information, information needs to provide insight to executives. So we created that model um, and we started looking at how would we uh, deliver that. And we started delivering that and the results were really amazing. Um, and within three months, we saw major shifts for uh, our clients that were in guidance. And um, then my mom was asking like, what is guidance? And you, I think you know Tracy. If you can like, explain it to your mom, you can pretty right. much explain it to anybody. And, and until I do, I feel like I don't <laughs> understand it yet. So I like tried all the, you know, software and change and, you know, a bunch of this kind of stuff. Continuous anyway, acceleration of a radical. Right, I know, exactly. All yeah. of the industry buzzwords that do not translate to my mom at all. And finally, I said, mom, imagine it's like this, that, um, that Salesforce or other platforms are like, like a gym and that um, what we do is we've been going and setting up gyms so that people can use them. And what we found was that um, eventually we realized that it isn't about the gym, it's about whether you use the gym or not. So all of my gym <laughs> memberships have been completely worthless. I've never used gyms well. Uh, and and that's, that's just because of behavior. It's not because the gym doesn't have the right equipment, it's because I don't use it well. And so technology, what we ended up deciding or what I said to mom is imagine if um, you're not seeing results at the gym, you don't need to change gyms, you need to get a personal trainer uh, to help you adjust your behavior. So we are personal trainers that help nonprofits adjust their behavior around technology. And if that means that they need to change gyms from one platform to another platform, we're good at that, we've done that, um, and we can help them do that. But we really don't do that unless they need that done and and unless the the change saturation requires it and so we pay a lot more attention to how we decrease change disruption and create behavior change in clients and relate that to technology so we have a three-year way of doing that and uh and the results are really exciting just completely yeah. different than what we were doing before so i've been in now it matters for seven months and you know, I kind of believed what Tim was saying about this and I kind of didn't until I saw it in action. And I realized that the power to align a nonprofit around its data and the conversations that that forces internally are conversations that drive things to change and that drives nonprofits to think differently about what they're doing and why they're doing it at all. And actually it deeply connects to what we're on about next here at Now It Matters. So what we're on about next is we're looking at things that serve the entire nonprofit ecosystem. And the things that serve nonprofits enable nonprofits to have conversations about how to be better nonprofits, not how do we put all our data in one place? How do we make this one application work for us no matter what? It doesn't matter. We need things that are bigger than brands, bigger than apps, and bigger than platforms. And we've been digging into the common data model, which is sponsored by Microsoft, but it is an open source tool that allows application developers to reliably put the same data in the same places across many different types of apps. And this is an industry standard created for this purpose so that nonprofits can adopt this technology and that technology and make technology for nonprofits less about binary choices and more about additive choices. Uh, I'll let it you say the next me, announcement. Well, it reminds me of the, the multiple conversations that decreased over time, but that when I got started in 2011, 2012, there was a lot of conversation around, hey, should you 
put this client on NPSP or not. And it was, um, and we, we would give all the arguments for why it's helpful because then, you know, it will be future proof. It will help uh, more apps are writing to that, uh, to NPSP. Um, and, you know, it is, it's got a community of people that can help answer a question in it because that question has been encountered by them specifically within that, you know, within NPSP. And that amazing work that we were part of, and it's like one of the things I'm really proud of is the efforts that we put into that both as a company and me personally. Um, and I think that what you're talking about, what we're talking about, is that, but at a platform scale rather than within a single platform. Exactly. That, would you say Across that? the whole ecosystem. Like, yeah. what really the opportunity here is, is going back to conversations we were having. I mean, we had one this morning about how, you know, when I got into tech for nonprofits, the name of the game was deploy this server in your nonprofit and everything will be oh centralized gosh. there and okay, you know? And then it became deploy this VPN so that everybody can deploy the server. And then it became deploy this platform so that everybody can log into this platform. The 2020s is all about deploy your data. And data is the thing that is most precious to nonprofits. It always has been. It's going to outlast staff. It's going to outlast every single five-year plan we make. So what we need to do now between now and 2030 is deploy our data across an ecosystem in a way that allows for true interoperability. Now, yeah, there are interestingly, some things, sorry, before you know, we move on, I hadn't yeah. thought of this before, but what's so true about that is that it's true whether your data is good or not. Yeah. Like, oh, you can deploy guidance data everywhere. Is get your data to tell the truth, right? But if your if your data is inaccurate, if it's not telling the truth or whatever, that is also the legacy that you keep taking with you. And it, no matter which platform you're in or what you do to the data, it just continues to give you the same bad information. Uh, you know, no matter which platform it is. So well, you uh, know, know that would make you like sort of a bad relationship job, person of you know. <laughs> It's like every bad relationship, you're like, how did it start so great and then so awful? Uh, uh, yeah, totally. you, you could ultimately yeah, say Skynet's the outcome of bad data <laughs> deployed everywhere if you wanted to look at it from that lens. You know? That's interesting. So we're also pleased to make an announcement about Now It Matters itself, right, Tim? Absolutely. We are excited to say that we are a launch partner for Microsoft's fundraising and enablement. Engagement. On we're enabling people on it, but it's an engagement tool. Fun Microsoft will like us for that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> on, on, built on Microsoft Dynamics, um, and it's an add-on piece, much like NPSP is an add-on piece to Salesforce. Uh, f &E is what we're calling it for short because I can't get the second word right. Uh, f &E is built on top of Microsoft Dynamics and it's the first platform that is built with CDM uh, as just built into it. So it already has the common data model in its core infrastructure. And we think that's important. Um, part of why we think that's important is that for the first time, Dynamics is available at a fundraising level to medium-sized nonprofits and large nonprofits in a way that we saw Salesforce become accessible to medium and small nonprofits and large nonprofits in Salesforce land. Um, and this is really important because it will actually be a solution that ties into other parts of uh, the Microsoft platform all automatically. It's just built in, it's pre-integrated. Uh, so I think that that's really important. We're most excited about this because of the CDM and because we think that the CDM is actually the next decade of what nonprofits need to be working towards and especially what ISVs need to be starting to align their, their apps around and what other platforms should be aligning their platforms around um, so that data and moving data where it needs to go is not a big lift and not an expensive part of every, every project which I think we're really tired of. Um, I'm just really enjoying like listening to you speak all the technical words. Usually I do that. 
<laughs> it's true. Yeah. I, you know. I, 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 all the actors who ever did Star Trek will tell you the worst part of their scripts was memorizing all the technical stuff. So, like, I've been watching The Big Bang Theory lately, and I've been <laughs> thinking about those guys. I mean, I know that, you know, Amy on that show is fine because she's actually a, you know, actually a scientist, but. Kind of the smartest man, one he, in the whole pool. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. So, so here's the million dollar question. Should nonprofits think about switching from Salesforce, for example, to Microsoft? And our answer to that is no, don't. Like that's, right. that's the whole point of CDM is that you don't have to start thinking about which platform as an or, but that you start thinking about platforms as an and. So instead of thinking about switching platforms, you start diving into the functions that we were just talking about, whether it's a data function, an information function, or uh, an insight function, and you start aligning the best tools that meet that function and you move the data to the function rather than absorbing that function into a platform. That is a completely different world in terms of interoperability. And, and it allows, it's just gonna allow the entire industry to align in a way that's never been conceivable before. Um, yeah, and again, I totally agree. CM is sponsored by Microsoft. But Microsoft has made that open and invited other platforms and brands to be part of the build on that and to be part of the community that's engaging that. So there's really also a call to community around the CDM. That's um, right. I have searched my entire nonprofit career for things that connect nonprofits to each other. Uh, some of you in the past may be familiar with some of my own rabble rousing and believe me, it's going to continue in this brave new world. Um, because what we serve is the nonprofit ecosystem. Nonprofits benefit best with choice, benefit best with organic opportunity and technology tool growth that actually meets people where they're at. And what this means is we can like actually spend our consulting time and dollars working on changing the behavior of organizations, which for somebody like me who has been part of the nonprofit tech world for almost 20 years and beyond, seeing the same patterns repeat themselves over and over again with new technology tools inserted, this might be the way that that gets broken. So we are incredibly excited. We are grateful to our roots in Salesforce, we are grateful to Microsoft and the common data model. We're incredibly excited about fundraising and engagement. And most of all, we're kind of incredible, incredibly excited about what this is gonna mean for the future of nonprofit tech. Any final words, Tim? I no, uh, if you're well. interested in hearing more, of course, reach out. We're glad to talk with you about that. Um, and stay tuned for uh, future announcements related to this. Absolutely. In the meantime, <laughs> that's all, folks. Can you do the the yabba yabba yabba? Yabba 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 yabba. Bye. All right. Bye.